situation. So let's now uh, you know move on uh, to the next one, DynaCash. So before we talk about DynaCash, right, let's talk about caching in general. The truth is, right, in today's context, right, given the high traffic that these e-commerce sites withstand, they simply cannot scale without caching, right. When you talk about num pay, you know, every second, uh, you know, thousand to thousand five hundred requests coming in, it's impossible for routing every request to your you know, your application server, read the database, render it, and yet come back in two seconds. It's just not possible. So caching is is, is, a, is a is a significant, you know, important ammunition to achieve high performance. Right? So it's not an optional decision, right? It's a mandatory uh, decision, right? The thumb rule is. Cache the page contents as you know closer to the user, right? You know, you have a lot of uh, you know uh, content delivery, you know, or con you know CDMs, right? These days, which will cache content, you know, close to the end user browser, right? So you could have edge servers, what EDG edge servers in multiple locations, Boston, you know, Minneapolis, or you know, so, you know, California. If, you know, if your site is doing multiple countries, it can have it in multiple locations inside those countries, right? So that when a content is cached there, it won't even it won't even bother your your web server or your app server in rendering, right? The page is rendered directly from that, right? So it's a very powerful technique. So we talk we will we will talk about edge side caching in a bit, but the other caching that uh, WebSphere offers is DynaCache, right? DynaCache is uh, the in-memory of cache service uh, in WebSphere application server, right? It, it basically stores a dictionary of objects, you know, like a key value uh, uh, mapping, right? Think of it as just a hash table. So it resides in the JVM, right? It has a lot of disk offload capabilities. So, it, you know, it, it is given a, you know, if it exceeds the memory threshold, because it's going to sit in your heap, right? So if your heap is 1.5 GB, you need to keep some, you know, 300, 400 MB for DynaCache, right? So it's going to sit in your heap, um, but it has disk offload capabilities, and it also has eviction techniques, right? Let's say you cached a particular page or a fragment, and if it is not really used, it will kick, you know, it, it uses the least resident used uh, algorithm to, you know, kick out uh, those uh, those entries. So if you look at DynaCache, right, it supports three types of caching. So one is called a full page cache. So if you look at a lot of uh, websites, like they have home pages, they have category pages, right? Like you can click on electronics or baby or you know women, men, right? They have categories, right? These pages, and then you have this even the product detail page. Let's say I search for iPhone, a page which has which, which talks about entirely iPhone, right? Kind of shows up. These pages, right? They don't differ from user to user, right? They have a few dynamic components, but they are largely static. So you should you should cache all these you know pages uh, in DynaCache. So and if you cache here, you can also offload the content to edge solutions like Akamai. So, right. The next is uh, your JSP uh, fragment caching. Right. J you know every JSP has is made up of multiple fragments. Right. So this is the most commonly used caching uh, techniques. So uh, an example is a good good example is like a header and a footer. Let's say you have, you you use your header uh, in all the pages, right? And a header has a lot of processing logic because it has to list all the categories, etc. But if you just cache them in in dynamic cache, from when it goes from page to page, it doesn't need to reconstruct itself. So it's a very very uh, it saves the page response time um, significantly. And the last is the you know uh, command caching, right? We talked about the sometimes fact that WebSphere Commerce has control of commands, task commands, etc. Right. So if you want to read attributes of a product, like say, let's say price or reviews or um, you know promotion details, etc. Right. They're all retrieved through a task command. And if you cache these task commands, right, the next time when you actually invoke these commands from a fragment or from a you know from a controller command, right. It won't actually go and make a call to the database. It'll render itself from the DynaCache. So all you know, DynaCache is very, very, very important. Um, and uh, you know, it, the the key uh, side note to also note is that as you cache a lot of these pages, you also need to come up with an invalidation strategy. Let's say you cache price. What if the business goes and changes the price from X to Y? You can't display the older price on the site, so you need some invalidation strategies 
uh, also built in. So, move, you know, talked about Dynacash, how important is it? Uh, continuing on it, right? The, you know, the other technique that is very, very uh, popular is warming up your cash or pre-warm. Let's say tomorrow is a you know holiday, right? And you ex you expect very high traffic hitting your site. You could just warm up the price uh, task commands for all the prices in your catalog, you know, ahead of time, so that when 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 these pages get loaded, right? You know, when the pages get hit, your data, your your traffic on your database or your JVM is much lesser than it would otherwise. You could also catch pages like. Uh, your product detail page, you know, quick view, etc. Right, home page, category page. So warming up of cache is very, very efficient. Now we come to another topic called in-memory grids. Right, data cache is very good, but the challenge you will have is it resides on your local JVM. Right. So let's say you have 100, 100 or 200 JVMs, you know, uh, you know, supporting your site. If I want to access, if I want to ensure a home page is cached, I need to type, it needs to be you know cached in every hundred, all the hundred JVMs before you can be confident that it's completely cached, right? So you know that's why we use you know in-memory grids like you know for for distributed caching, right? Um, WebSphere Extreme Scale is a product uh, which is actually is an in-memory grid. It supports uh, distributed caching, offers extremely high scalability transactional support, and WCS can actually talk to WebSphere Extreme Scale through, um, you know, RMI or ORB calls. So now let's talk about WXS or Extreme Scale for a little bit. Now let's say you cached a lot of content in your Dynacache. Now your heap is going to grow. So if you configure your Dynacache provider as an external in-memory grid, then this grid is going to be shared across all JVMs. It will easily save 300 to 400 MB in each of these JVMs. The other advantage you have is you cache it once, you can be rest assured that all JVMs read from it. Right? And um, you know, and then so it's very powerful. It's a separate product. It supports a lot of other features, but uh, you know, it also has replication. So you know, if you have uh, uh, let's say you have two data centers, right? Uh, to for either disaster recovery or, you know, in a, even in an active active mode, you know, using you need to make sure cache is replicated efficiently between the two data centers. So you will have a WebSphere Extreme Scale installation in one and data center in the second one, right? And it offers replication services. So, so well, you know, consider using uh, you know uh, in memory grid uh, shared in memory grid if you want to cache a lot of content. In uh, you know, you, I uh, I remember that we we managed to cache up up to about uh, easy up to 20 GB worth of content, uh, you know, you know, um, uh, in extreme scale, uh, something that you can't uh, do when you have uh, you know it's going to be you can do but it's going to be much tricky uh, when you just use your Dana cache uh, you know sitting on your heap. Uh, finally, right when it comes to caching. Um, you know, use of a content delivery network is, is extremely important. In um, in peak seasons, right? You know, I have seen sites which will offload up to 60 percent of their total page views are just Akamai or any of these content delivery networks. So, so you, so let's say there are 1,000 people hitting your website, and you have a lot of pages that are fairly static with some dynamic components in it. You could just catch all of them at Akamai. So that you know, very only 400 uh, or 1,000 makes their way into your uh, web your application server. So to summarize, right, caching is extremely important. You know, you should uh, you should you should you should definitely cache uh, you know you know solution your pages closest closer to the user in edge. And the third is right, uh, you know, consider using like in-memory grids. Uh, you know, if you want to um, uh, you know achieve higher scalability and uh, performance. So moving on from caching, um, I'm moving to the next layer which is uh, what are the tuning 